Agomina Davis Mackenzie, Nanaskuma, Igwe Witi Hituma, Ntatuske Onuta, Hueska Pei Tutaman. I'll begin by acknowledging the Coast Salish people whose territory we're meeting on. I express my sincere gratu gratitude to the offici officiating elder, Leonard George, and I applaud the chiefs and leaders who are here and those who would have liked to have been here. I would like to give a special salute to my fellow survivors. And thank you to Davis for finessing my PowerPoint presentation for today. I am very honored to have been asked to speak at this gathering wearing my philosopher's hat. Lateral violence is no longer a sleeper issue when we see the casualties out there. Lateral violence is a man-made disaster that needs our critical reflection now, holistically and fearlessly. Oops, sorry. There is no single story about Kitimaituin, lateral violence, but we all know the one about the crab syndrome. Kitimaituin, lateral violence, mimics behavior that is not in keeping with our traditions and teachings. When we buy into lateral violence, we galvanize our power base by clawing back another's, another person's human reserves in a bucket of diminishing returns. The bucket of scarcity, hierarchical authority, guilt, blame, criticism, right and wrong thinking, and polarizing positions is our new arena of struggle. While it may take a dominator and an underling to start this struggle, the tremors triggered by the power of collective energy soon enslave the minds, bodies, and spirits of bystanders, including the innocents. In his book, My Heart Soars, the late great Chief Dan George wrote, and I quote, my people's memory reaches in the beginning of all things, end of quote. When Cree women rise as one to the Sundance drum to face brutal rays from the western summer sun, the men cry out a full-length feature of non-violence. Ah, we are, your beauty is my pain. Non-violence dances forward beautifully, deliberately, and exhaustively, except for those who are at the bottom of the bucket. Yet we know their day will come as, it, as surely as it never did. Our connecting question is, why do we have a sense of urgency 
to deal with itimaituin, lateral violence. It is because if a dominator shuts us up, shuts us out, and shuts us down, that individual or group makes us poor. When we do the same back to the dominator, we make ourselves poor. Therefore, the power dynamic in lateral violence takes on the compound factor of kitimaksuna, poverties of all kinds that get us coming and going. Lateral violence simmers and stews in our living context, tempting it with disrespectful, threatening, and punishing behaviors brings it alive, so ignoring, denying, and physically attacking others becomes commonplace. Because of all this exertion and stress, we give off a lot of exothermic heat on Mother Earth, who is already suffering from global warming. As role reversal takes hold in earnest, and women are becoming the main providers in homes, negative labeling and obsessive concerns about the other's actions create friction between life partners, increasing tension in the home. The time and energy it takes to compete in a brain-based knowledge economy finds us far from the sun and close to the moon all too often, depriving us of sleep and a humane schedule. We work 24 seven on corporate mergers and takeovers, like the transfer of health services to First Nations control, always running the risk of turning on one another from burnout and rep repetitive relationship injuries on the job. Our collective response to lateral violence, kitimaituin, is tigema, which means we have to confirm what we cannot reasonably doubt. Lateral violence works in overt and covert ways. First, it hides in an intense gaze on what we perceive as negative in another person or group. Then it manifests itself as the killer of our life-giving ideas, perspectives, and interests. Kitimak suin, lateral violence, works with stealth and with presence. Biko. We have no choice. We have to name and own lateral violence, itimaituin, and be accountable for it. But accountability is a curious word when it is broken up into account and ability. A account means we have to take our own inventory to deal with lateral violence. And ability says we have to do our personal work to stop it. Account points to the importance of showing up and speaking out against lateral violence, while ability supports the safety and security to do so. Taking charge of lateral violence discloses and opposes its nested properties. But we have to lead ourselves first, change ourselves as a matter of priority, and accept lateral violence as a homegrown problem. It starts in the home. 
go forth. Lateral violence works in four phases. I hurl, I hurt, I help, and equity. We want to land on the fourth phase, equity. Go forth, an original instruction tells us to avoid and reject behaviors that help us get ahead on the backs of others. Our duty is to move forward in the quadrant where our sacred number four is located. I hurl stands in for incessant humiliation and harassment that undercuts our relationships laterally. <coughs> Colonization is tattooed into our bodies, minds, and spirits. It's byproduct. Kayasu magano tihikuya. Historic trauma is the blunt assault we are now experiencing on a massive scale. Colonization and historic trauma find expression in organized collective humiliation and harassment today. We are caught in a deadly fight, mpahai man, not of our making. But responding to past injustices by normalizing lateral violence only creates fertile conditions for mutipayuin, acting out irrationally, so anger, fear, and terror and rage are more easily vented on those closest to us. When we subscribe to our to I hurl, our weaponry is pastahuin, the transgression of taboos, like preying on the weak and tearing down the other camp. The elderly and children are fragile and must be handled with care, and camps are hallowed grounds where we live, work, play, and pray. Our sacred faces, places, and spaces are not to be violated by lateral violence, the payment we make for breaking taboos. What comes to you in recovery is to come to, to become altered, to pass gradually into the present, to pass from one phase to another, and this is where TLC is found. TLC is tender loving care, not total lack of concern. The manifest evidence wapati gusuin of lateral violence threatens to collapse our communities through family feuds, gangs, foster care, school dropouts, crime, runaways, sexual abuse, suicide, and murders. Leaning heavily on Mam Tunaitigan, mindfulness and reflection will help us visualize self-acceptance, honest expression, empathetic listening, solidarity, and compassion, and will keep lateral violence in a, abeyance. And we will make a conscious decision to throw off the shackles of kitimaituin, lateral violence. The second phase of lateral violence is I hurt. Intrusive harms underdevelop our reserves and responses terminally. Momuin is the cry of pain, 
caused by lateral violence markers like jealousy, bullying, blaming, shunning, backstabbing, gossip, sabotaging, spreading malicious rumors, verbal abuse, selective hiring and firing, and sexual harassment. When burdened by this pain, we actually feel like we're being strangled by grief and loss. Often, we will be hurt to the point of dropping family obligations and community duties. Such unseemly withdrawal and cocooning is called epesuesi. Attacks on our person wear out our human reserves, and the communities we used to call reserves, which we now know as First Nations, because the late, great George Manuel took us there. When we hurt too much and too often, what sets in is my mom to Natsigan, the wretched state of being that leads to poor mental health, which usually coexists with my ma tuhuin, poor physical health. Spiritual help, assistance, or counseling received by offering appropriate gifts to the drum, a song or ceremony, dipaikewin, eases the pain. Our cultural beliefs see to the cathartic release of our emotions and enhance our capacity to cope positively with the pain. The unholy power of lateral violence begins to pale in comparison to the higher power of the drum, our songs and ceremonies. I help individual harmony efforts lead to peace, productivity, and prosperity. Lateral violence occurs in echo chambers where messages are one and the same, harsh and hostile. Filters are needed to make sense of this information overload where the information like body language, tone of voice, histories of individuals, families, and groups, blood or cultural origin, economic or social position, the color of skin, hair, and eyes are used to justify lateral violence. As the great Willie Ermine says, Mama Tausuin is our capacity to tap and use the creative forces of our inner space, using all the faculties that constitute our being. Human agency and pragmatism are critical for restoring balance, especially when lateral violence strikes the workplace. Beatigirwin is tranquil repose and peace. But when stress levels are high where we work, sick days increase, teamwork falls, morale is poor, resignations are frequent, addictions take hold, and paychecks are all that matter. We do not do our best work when we have our ear to the, gro to the ground, our nose to the grindstone, and our back to the wall. When lateral violence creeps into our workplaces, we are relieved if our fights break out into meetings. 
Hia Nia, seeing oneself as other, nurtures the soul, heals the rifts, and keeps the faith because the Creator does not help those who help themselves, help themselves, help themselves. Was come soon, recovery is to come to, to become altered, to pass gradually into the present, to pass from one phase to the one we want to arrive at. Kisewat suen, affection, possessing a merciful, kind, gentle disposition, frees us from the grip of negative work conditions and habits. Still, we can't change what we do until we change how we think and act. Unless we plumb the depths of our relationships in Stutatuan, in our workplaces, we will remain attached to our rightness and hard positions, missing out on ready remedial measures like healthy workplace policies, mediation, and dispute resolution. The moment we think about the nobleness of our jobs and how our people are embedded in them, situskatu, supporting one another, occurs to us. Moments die only to rise up again when mamawiti took pull hard together for work, seeps into our consciousness. Pulling hard together for work is not about warring against ourselves through lateral violence. We must wa be ever watchful that we do not give into the warring impulses we all have at some time or other. By using musuhuin, sensory analysis, we can reason through smell, touch, sight, hearing, and feeling, so we can sense the unforgiving patterns of lateral violence Kitimahituin. Quartered frameworks, Neryawita, will have to frame our thinking as we shift Kitimahituin ladro violence to its rightful place. Instead of a win lose approach where somebody inevitably loses, it will be important to adopt the more peaceable alternative, fair, fair, nahe, nahe. Everyone, kakiyawaiwak, will have to become fair-minded if we were to keep lateral violence out of our workplace. Egwasi, that little Cree word, versions into at least 12 English terms. So, thus, in that way, right, all right, there, that's it, that is all, well, enough and goodbye. Using our own definitions and language for lateral violence will help us speak truth to power without doing further harm to one another. Developing code words like 
Ecosse would warn us when we are on slippery slopes to committing lateral violence. Thinking well of ourselves, Bimemowin will hasten good choices in our words and actions. We will speak about hurts and harms by focusing on behaviors, not persons, and we will make observations, not judgments. And to conform to our cultural standards, we will reset good examples beside our oral traditions. To make lateral violence history, the past, present, and future can no longer be the same. Something eventful and essential has to happen to ramp up this change. Witness the signing of the BC Tripartite Framework Agreement on First Nations Health Governance on October 13, 2011. On that day, we signed a script which we have read back to ourselves time and again. The people, distances, and centuries it took to arrive at this historical juncture are nothing short of awesome. Written into the script are our Paktingeuna giveaways, the most important being the surrender of our woundedness to the universe. The takeaways Utinge Magana are forgiveness, peace, and trust. Naskumuin, solutions and gratitude, balance the top and bottom, while Asuna Magana, regifting, spreads this ethos from big houses to little tents, from one text to the next. Should the process get punitive and pernicious, a wise saying will light the right path. Umagani postamak, pukukawita pitamak, what we stand by is what we have to sit in for. The messaging here is soft on the surface, but hard at the core. The late great Everett Soup Jew drew this cartoon, which speaks volumes about Gitimaitwin, lateral violence, and the constant change and virtual shock that come with it. But the cartoon also tells us we do not have to look very far for leaders because they are found in all followers. Indeed, followership can change leadership and each can morph into the other. The warp and woof were Kitimaitouin lateral violence. This warp and woof is where lateral violence will meet its match. It doesn't stand a chance against the tightly woven blanket that decorates true warriors against lateral violence, Kitimaitouin. They are who go into the abyss of the unknown to take battle 
against a phenomenon we can no longer abide in our communities. It is not about being at war with each other. It's about being at war with Kitimaituan lateral violence. Chief Dan George says so much in his book, My Heart Soars, and I quote, Already signs of new life are arising among my people after our sad winter has passed. We have discarded our broken arrows and empty quivers, for we know what served us in the past can never serve us again." End quote. Kitatamahina, ay hi. Thank you. Hachka. Thank you.